Andrew Ryan. And I'm here to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? No, says the man in Washington. It belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican. It belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow. It belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. Bioshock is a 2007 horror game. I've definitely heard of the name before, but I knew nothing about it. I didn't know what it was about, nor had I seen any gameplay. That's one of the reasons why I enjoyed making this video, and I'd like to thank my subscriber, Dizzy Gamer Official, for suggesting I review creatures from this game series. Since in the process of gathering information about these creatures, I learned more about the game its mysterious world and its creatures. This video will focus on three creatures from the game, the iconic Big Daddies, the Big Sisters, and the Splicers. I'll only touch information that is relevant to each creature. It's the year 1960. Our protagonist Jack finds himself afloat in the cold seas of the Atlantic Ocean after his plane crashed. Jack manages to swim to a nearby lighthouse where he finds a bath sphere that transports Jack to a large underwater city called Rapture. Rapture was created by Andrew Rayan, an individualist business magnate. He built a city as a utopia for society's elite, where they could live without the restrictions of government and morality. To protect and isolate Rapture, Rayan outlawed any contact with the surface world. In this secluded underwater city, advances in arts and science were made, including the discovery of Adam, a gene-altering substance made by a species of sea slugs discovered on the ocean floor. Adam is then processed into an unstable serum known as a plasmid, which can alter genetic material and grant superhuman powers such as telekinesis and pyrokinesis. Created by the evil scientist Yi Sochong, Big Daddies are the maintenance workers of Rapture City. They are humans that have been genetically enhanced with Adam and then seal it inside a large armored diving suit. Their body, bones, and organs have been spliced with the suit, making them one. The victims of Yi Sochong, who he turned into Big Daddies, were residents of the Persephone Correctional Facility who were exiled criminals, criminally insane, political rebels, some who opposed Andrew Rayan. The idea to use Persephone residents as test subjects was suggested by Andrew Rayan. Subjects would undergo a voiced box modification and pheromone application. The subjects' bodies and organs are then grafted to their diving suit. Then, the subjects are placed in an unknown substance that would make them obedient over time. Enhanced strength and agility were given to the subjects inside the suit through genetic splicing. The endoskeleton contains the life support system necessary to keep the human inside the diving suit alive while performing their duties, granting them extreme strength and a greater endurance to withstand the harsh conditions of the sea. Besides maintaining the underwater city, Big Daddy's objective is to protect the Little Sisters, which are little girls that Yi Sochong genetically altered and mentally conditioned to collect Adam. When the demands for Adam skyrocketed, Yi Sochong had the Little Sisters collect Adam directly from dead splicers' corpses around the streets of Rapture to recycle the genetic material. Because the streets are dangerous, the Protector program was initiated in which the Big Daddies were psychologically bonded to the Little Sisters, turning them into their protectors. The Big Daddies would escort the Little Sisters while they collected Adam, and would destroy any threat they encountered. As mentioned, the Big Daddies are psychologically bound to the Little Sisters, 
and if all the little sisters are harvested or saved, the big daddies can be seen aimlessly wandering, banging on vents, looking for the girls. The big daddies are then heard groaning in frustration and walking away. Big daddies communicate by producing a frightening sound similar to that of a whale, and big daddy helmets are filled with a bioilluminescent chemical substance which shows their current emotional state with three different colors. This is meant as a safety system that's triggered by hormones produced by the big daddies, allowing those around them to know when they're docile and when they're enraged. Green meaning they're hypnotized and friendly, yellow meaning they're aware but indifferent to their environment, and red meaning that they're enraged and will attack. There are five different Big Daddy models, the Rosies, the Bouncers, the Rumblers, the Alpha series, and the Lancers. The Bouncers and the Rosies both have elite versions which are more deadly. Big Daddies are extremely strong and can move surprisingly fast despite their large size. The five Big Daddy models vary in their dexterity, speed, size, and weapons. The Bouncers use a large drill. The Rosies use a rivet gun. The Rumblers use a shoulder-mounted RPG cannon. The Alpha series use a variety of weapons such as shotguns, machine guns, and launchers. And the Lancers use an ion laser. Eventually, the Little Sisters grow up to become Big Sisters. Although no longer able to produce Adam, their exposure to Adam causes them to grow taller, reaching heights of 6 to 7 feet tall, and developing great strength and plasmid powers. The mental conditioning given to them by Dr. Su Chong when they were little sisters eventually caused them to go insane and exhibit extreme aggression. As the number of big sisters grew, Gilbert Alexander used new mental conditioning methods and improved diving suits to make the Big Sisters a new form of protector for the Little Sisters. The Big Sisters' role is to accommodate, protect, and transport the Little Sisters. They have a cage-like basket on their backs where they carry the Little Sisters. Big Sisters are used as enforcers and they also have diving suits crafted onto them similar to Big Daddies allowing Big Sisters to exit the Rapture, go on reconnaissance missions, and kidnap little girls from the surface. The Big Sisters successfully kidnapped several children from around the world, taking them back to the Rapture to then be converted into the next generation of Little Sisters. The Big Sisters targeted coastal regions bordering the Atlantic Ocean, making it easy for the Big Sisters to escape after snatching their target. Worldwide reports were made on the abductions by the parents of the abducted children, but the authorities were powerless and couldn't do anything about the matter. The red lights produced by the Big Sisters' hoods underwater caused those who witnessed them to believe that the underwater lights were UFOs. Big Sisters have a diverse set of attacks, consisting of range, meal, and telekinetic attacks. Before a Big Sister attacks, the player will hear a loud screech off in the distance, warning the player of the upcoming attack. Big Sisters have large wrist mounted needles on their left arm, which they use as a meal attack and to extract Adam from splicers, which allows them to regain health during combat. Big Sisters have six different abilities. Meal, where they jab their Adam syringes into the player, grappling them or if the player is behind them, turning around and stabbing them. Charge, where they run towards the player at high speed dealing minor damage and minor kickback disorienting the player and they may also attempt to grapple the player and stab them two to three times. Fire Barrage, when they fire three to four large exploding fireballs with rapid speed and damage. Telekinetic Pummel, where they use their telekinesis to lift nearby objects and throw it towards the player. Drain where they gain health by summoning a splicer nearby by emitting a loud scream. They then absorb health of the splicer by using their large syringes. This move does make the Big Sisters vulnerable to the player's attacks though. Teleport Big Sisters can teleport great distances and they usually teleport when they're stuck, the player moves to a different area, or during scripted events. Burst 
A short distance attack where they create an expanding visible ring of force that deals damage when it hits the player. The term splicer is applied to rapture residents that have become addicted to Adam and are dependent on it both physically and mentally. Their excessive use of Adam has led to the deformation of their bodies and their mind. Many splicers wear masquerade ball masks to hide their deformed faces, possibly out of shame. The destructive effects of Adam can cause horrible physical deformities in splicers. However, others only experience psychosis with little notable mutations as seen with Sandra Cohen and this is due to the side effects of Adam varying with each individual. Some common defects observed among the splicer due to long-term Adam abuse include but are not limited to bleeding from the eyes, nose and mouth, hallucinations, insanity, insomnia, memory loss, paranoia, tumors and irritability. Splicers are a common enemy type in the Bioshock series, found in corridors and tunnels, searching for Adam and the Little Sisters. Splicers tend to wear little to no armor, but they make up for it with great physical strength and durability. Splicers are sometimes found in groups. In Bioshock 1, there are five splicer types you'll encounter. Thuggish Splicers, that attack by rushing their target with male weapons. They're weak but they're really fast and attacking groups. Thuggish splicers with electric flush gene tonic are immune to all electrical damage. Leadhead splicers that attack with ranged weapons, either a pistol or machine gun. They're dangerous at a distance and have more health than the thuggish splicer, but they're vulnerable when they're reloading their weapon. Spider splicers attack by physically attacking the player, then immediately retreating by jumping onto the ceiling or back flipping away to then attack again from a different angle. Spider Splicer's ability to crawl on the ceiling and their agility makes them more difficult to hit. They also attack by throwing hooks at the player from a far distance. Houdini Splicers attack by using a hit and run strategy. They attack the player by shooting balls of fire or ice. Then they teleport to a different location to then repeat the attack cycle. Nitro Splicers attack by throwing grenades and molotov cocktails from a distance. At close range, they will either throw smoke bombs to temporarily blind the player and doing some damage, or they will toss a grenade over their shoulder or they will just attempt to kick the player. When a Nitro Splicer dies, they will drop a live grenade. In Bioshock 2, 8 years after the first game, the Splicers are much more stronger, aggressive, twisted and heavily mutated with their limbs becoming slimmer and bone structures remodeling by developing extra limbs such as extra fingers, toes or even talons. The few splicers that remained are not hostile to little sisters, but are now hostile to subject Delta, which they see as an enemy and will attack on sight. Most splicer types seen in Bioshock 1 are in Bioshock 2, except for the Nitro Splicer. The Leadhead Splicers are now able to use a shotgun. A new type of splicer seen in Bioshock 2 is the Brood Splicer, a large bulky splicer that attacks by picking up heavy objects such as rocks and explosives and throwing them at the player. They can also travel long distances by jumping.